Come here. Yeah. Come here. The Elite 50 Whoa. was born last year. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. The top 50 anglers from the Sitgo Bassmaster Tour in a four-event series. <laughs> last year, one of the legends won the series. And another legend broke away from the crowd by winning two of the four events. Oh, Those two legends are in the mix again as we start E50 2005. Ooh, Not just in the mix, but in the finals and shooting for the championship. Get ready, because we're going to freaking whack them. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. The first Elite 50 event of 2005. We're going to take you down to the state of Alabama, north central part of the state, and Smith Lake, pretty good sized lake, built back in 1960, but best known for a particular subspecies of the black bass family. We've got three days of tournament fishing in the book so far, a lot of action. They've been catching a lot of largemouth bass and big numbers, huge numbers of those Kentucky or spotted bass as they are known. We're set to begin this final day of fishing. We're going to have six anglers, the Super Six, who are within three pounds of each other. Should be a big day on Smith Lake. And this is clear water. I mean, I'm talking clear water. We're not used to this. It kind of changes the, the techniques that these guys fish. And during the qualifying days, we were able to use the whole lake. But now it's going to change a little. Yeah. Tommy Sanders here with Jerry McKinnis. Glad you are here as well to watch the Elite 50 again. The Elite 50, the top 50 ranked anglers on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. You get in by being among the top 27 in terms of your performance over the past three years. You could be one of the top 20 money winners of all time. The Rookie of the Year, the Toyota Rookie of the Year, the Sitco Angler of the Year, or the Sitco Bassmaster Classic Champs. We've got the big names here, the best The, in the big names. Last year, Kevin Van Dam was the overall points winner, but we had four events. Mark Davis hogged them. He won half of those. <laughs> Can you believe that? New season, though. Absolutely. 2005 is underway. Our final day is on the way. But take, take a look right now at days one and two of the competition and see who was up to their old tricks again. Quality fish in there. There's one of the guys we're talking about. Mark Davis starts it out in a big way. 28 pounds and 13 ounces on the first two days. But the big hitter, the legend, Kevin Van Dam, 31 pounds and 2 ounces, stretched out a big lead after two days. Take a look at that leaderboard. We got classic champs all over the place. Van Dam, Davis, Jay Yellis as well. We'll go to the second half of that top 12. And we pick up three more, Iconelli, Nixon, and Height. What a feel we have. And those stats are pretty good, but at this point, we're going to zero the weight, and we're going to put our anglers on a six-hole course, which is a stretch of water that no one, not even in practice, has been allowed to fish on. Well, the weights carry over from day three, and the first one to fall out of the race was Davey Height, one of those classic champs. He voted only five pounds and 11 ounces on day number three. He would fall short of making the cut. Jeff Creek is sitting in fourth place to start day number three. He'd have the biggest fall on that day, all the way to 11th place, and he himself oh, out of yeah, the top six. Pete Reese was feeling it early, low. but he would not <laughs> hang on. Both he and Jay Ellis would miss the cut by less than half a pound. Watch me fake, I can have it out. <laughs> Toughest competition of the day, two anglers fishing the same hole together and trying to put it on each other. The big one! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I told you I was going to get the hearing squeal. Let me see Larry Nixon and Mark Davis do that. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Mike Iconelli Woo. going Ike, of course, with a four-pounder, but he would fall short of making the top six as well. And Larry Nixon four ounces short of making it to the final day. That would leave six anglers, including Kelly Jordan, who would come in with 11 pounds, 9 ounces, and the E50 champion Kevin Van Dam from 2004, the last man standing, making it in in sixth place with 11 pounds even. That one's a key. All right, so our finalists are ready to go in our wrinkle, as we have with all of our E50s, Jerry, as we have a six-hole course to put them on. Yeah, this is pretty simple. We'll start the day with an angler in each one of these holes. They'll fish for an hour and 10 minutes and then rotate and do that all day until they fish every one of the holes. And I love this course. There's fishing on both banks. You can't just 
go in there and run to this bank and start fishing. You have some decisions to make. Yeah, strategy and pacing among them will be very important today. And we are ready to go. We got our six guys. We are fishing for one winner, and we know what you came here to see. Hello, darling. Almost 17 inches. That's what the people come to see. Sitgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Berkeley Gulf, Toyota, Purolator, and Triton Boats. Feast your eyes on that bad dog. <laughs> is that not a pretty lure? No spotted bass. They crushed it yesterday. You just absolutely annihilated that thing. Well, Mark Davis feels good about his equipment. He's one of six finalists on championship day here. First Elite 50 event of 2005 from Smith Lake in Alabama. Six finalists ready to get going on six fishing holes that are designated for about an hour and 10 minutes of fishing in each. Mark Davis is the leader coming into the day. If there's going to be any advantage of fishing any particular bank, this is where I caught a lot of my fish yesterday. You can see there's not much wind. Wind's out here coming down the main lake, so, but this bank over here is catching a lot of wind, so we're going we're gonna to start on this bank over here, and all this boat traffic's going to have it stirred up a little bit, but that's a good thing. All those wakes from those boats, that really does the same thing that the wind does. It muddies up the bank a little bit, and that's a, that's a good thing. If I can get this guy to not run up on the bank over here where I'm going to fish, Mark Davis just about ready to get started in hole two. Jerry, explain to me what he was explaining to us there. Uh, Mark Davis knows his stuff, yeah. I guarantee you that. And he's going to start near this point in the middle of his section. He caught five fish in there yesterday. And what he's talking about actually, well, you know, a spotted bass is a nosy little critter. And when the water's nice and calm and clear, he will run up to your bait and look at it. And that's about the end of it right get there. Out of there. Yeah. Well, he's going to be on this point, and he's looking for a little bit of boat traffic, which will cloudy up the water over there. He'll like that. Or the wind, which is kind of coming across the top of his section, will not hit this bank over here, but will hit that point over there. That, too, will give a little bit of protection and will make the fish do more than look at your bait. He will react to it. Wind is the whole key to it. This water is so clear that you really need the wind to make those fish respond, you know, to a, to a reaction bait, like a spinner bait or a jerk bait. You know, days, and, and yesterday when the wind went down, I had a lot of big fish come up behind my lure and they wouldn't take it. But if you could pick, you might only have one little 100 yard section of, of, of shoreline or a point where the wind was hitting a good, that would be where you would get your bites. The bites, at least, that would go ahead and take your lure. There one. That's a little guy, I seen him, but he came up there and looked at it. Yeah, they're around there. There was another one. Hitting it short. How many tray looks can a guy put on a spinner bait? Dang, got it. That is so aggravating. will not get that spinner bait today. And they don't bite the jerk bait as well as they do the spinner bait. They like the spinner bait better. Doesn't sound like he's got complete confidence in the jerk bait as he picks well, it up there. Well, on, on Mark's uh, uh, day three trip to the course, he started on this very hole. Looks like he's got a fish on, yeah. on a jerk bait right there. But in this very same hole, he caught four fish within 15 or 20 minutes after the beginning of the event four fish to get started in the first hole. How about that? That gives you a lot of confidence in a spinnerbait, I'll tell you that. Today, it doesn't seem to be quite as good, and so he's switching back and forth between between a spinnerbait and a jerkbait. Well, expect to see lots of jerkbaits in action today if the first three days are any indication. Let's go back and redo all them little places where I missed them a while ago. Well, Mark Davis may think he's onto something right here. Meanwhile, we're on to Kevin Worth over in hole number three. Kevin Worth, who's had a good, solid three days of tournament fishing so far. In fact, he caught a bunch of fish right near the ramp on days one and two. But now we see him picking up the drop shot rig. And a lot of people, Jerry, think that drop shotting is, is straight up and down, almost like vertical oh, jigging. No, that's not right. You can take a drop shot rig and throw it over there against the bank just like you could a little tube or, or a finesse jig or anything you would normally throw at the bank. And he's 
using real light line there, and a drop shot is a rig where your weight is on the bottom of your line, and your worm rig is maybe 12, 14 inches above it. And speaking of 16 inches, that oh. is what this <laughs> fish needs to be. Boy, we got a, a lot of fish out here from 14 to 16. Yes, and boy, the guys catch so many of them, and they're looking for the 16 to 19. But Tommy, I mean, look at this bank right here. This is a perfect example of what Kevin and everybody is trying to do. There's probably a stretch of about 25 feet in depth off the edge of that bank there that is very productive water. And that drop shot will land up there in the shallow water. It'll pull back out maybe 8, 10 feet and drop off into another level, drop over into maybe 15 feet of water. And there's actually another ledge below that. Well, you can see the top of that rock, we're sitting in 31 foot of water. What is it about those depth changes? Big swings in depth seem to be what attracts fish. Why does that work that way? Well, you know, I, I do have to say that we had a little bit of cold weather last night. And, and the, the depth that was so productive yesterday was three, four feet of water on that first ledge. And now it seems like the weather may have pushed them off into that next level. And you know, they were up there in the shallow water spawning. And I think that's about over as well. And so what Kevin is doing right here is perfect. And everybody's doing that. It isn't that he's onto something special. He's trying to fish that shallow, uh, that shallow zone and then pull that little drop top off to the next zone. And I, I think that middle zone, maybe 12, 15 feet deep, will be the place to be today. And maybe Kevin has got himself a keeper right here. Got to be 16 or better. I believe we just scored. Hello, darling. Almost 17 inches. That's what the people come to see. Kevin Worth feeling good about his start to the day. Kevin Worth keeping in touch with the leader, Mark Davis. We got more fishing to come on this final championship day at Smith Lake. Drop shots, jerk baits. What's next on the smorgasbord of lure choices? We'll be back. Event number one of the Elite 50 Series for 2005. We're on Smith Lake in Alabama. This is the final day. This is championship day. We are down to six anglers. There's your leaderboard, Mark Davis, the guy in charge at this point. Each of the six anglers fishing the six-hole course. That means each angler has a little more than an hour in each one of our six designated fishing holes. This is our first look now at Zell Rowland. Zell Rowland, who has one tour win under his belt this year already. That was at Lake Gunnersville, where he edged out Morris Oshimizu. And he is starting in hole number four, which is the one hole that has a lot of boat docks in it. So all the guys will be working them pretty hard. Zell is working it with the topwater bait, trying to get in as far as he possibly can with his bait. Ah, dang. called getting greedy. Well, the top water is what Zell started out with on this day. His logic was, well, the rest of the guys, including the leader, are fishing the finesse stuff. So this is the way I can catch a big fish and I can catch up, but not too long after this incident right here. Yeah, yeah. Zell, Zell abandons the top water. Yeah, I tell you what, Zell is a great top water fisherman in spite of the fact that he was hung up in the cable right yeah. there. But you know what? We had a oh. an unusual night last night. It, it got really chilly, and I thought, Boy, that's going to change things up when the guys get out there today. And sure enough, uh, it, it is affecting those topwater fish a little bit. I think it's affecting all fish that are shallow, and it's going to force everybody to get out kind of in that next There's level of, of right depth. There. They're, going to, they're going to leave the three feet of water and go to the 15 feet of water, which means that they are going to be throwing a little finesse worm. And, and well, we've already seen Kevin throw his drop shot. A whole bunch. That fish was deep, deep, deep. Yeah, some big changes since day one. Here's a guy that everyone thought might run away with it since the first day was so warm, so much side fishing. Kelly Jordan, but now he's on the finesse stuff, too. And he's throwing around boat docks, and boy, he's a tough angler when you start mixing boat docks into the, into the game plan. And you, you know what? As I look at all six of our anglers, I see Please that a keeper. with the Exception of Chad Morgenthaler, everyone has won an event. And I think that's pretty important that we that we pay close attention to that because you know we're gonna we're gonna watch Chad as the as the day goes on, but it, it's interesting to know that every one of these guys yes. know how to Come win. And that's important. There gotta be some up on this point here. It's perfect. 
former classic champ, former angler of the year, Kevin Van Dam. As a matter of fact, Kevin, I believe this or not, has not won a tournament since he won that 2001 Sitco Bassmaster Classic. Boy, he is hungry, isn't he? He do. Hey, I tell you what, I, I made the mistake, um, I don't know, months or a year ago, saying that Kevin doesn't fish as fast as we all think that he does. After following him through some of these holes on this course, I take that back. He's the fastest fisherman <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. Now, anybody can get in a hole and turn their trolling motor on and go just as fast as they possibly can. But Kevin does it and covers the water as he's doing it. He is perfect at that. And he's throwing his little topwater bait right now. Oh, God. Good one. Well, he just barely got it. And, and he was over, I had to throw over the back of that limb to get back there. And he just come off. I had to pull hard to try to keep him up on top to, keep, to get him to go over the top of that log not the direction he wanted to go. Kevin Van Dam wants a better result than he had with that one there. Well, the time has come now to change. We have ended the first period of fishing a little over an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes in each one of the six holes. Our leader so far, well, it was a leader coming into this final day. Mark Davis with 16 pounds, about a pound and a half ahead of Kevin Worth. Kevin Worth, who has been so solid all week long, has been catching him in a variety of different ways, but mostly with the finesse stuff. He was sight fishing for him on day number one, not too far from the boat dock, and now he's got apparently another good spot scoped out here. He's throwing top water bait, and he's also throwing a jerk bait. Uh, we saw him early throwing his little drop shot, so he's doing, a, he's doing a number of things, and everybody is doing that same thing, kind of switching around as, as much as possible. But when you get in these little flat pockets, it's a good place to throw this topwater bait. Most of the fish you catch today are going to be spotted bass, but if, when you get in places like this, a topwater bait, or anything for that matter, might catch a largemouth bass. And sometimes the largemouth bass are a little bit bigger, so the guys like to target them. When they jumped on it. All right, we'll have to see if this one will measure for Kevin Worth. He's been good at catching his fish so far today, but he has not been good at catching fish that are over 16 inches in length. That's why limits this week have been very hard to come by for nearly all of these anglers. Kevin's been a champ at uh, 15 and a half inches. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kevin Worth keeping this thing interesting. He is tied. Our leader, Mark Davis, Kevin Van Dam is on the board. Kelly Jordan is on the board as well. Del Rowland. Well, would you be going out on a limb to predict him getting into the mix? We'll find out when we come back. Jesus, this is how my luck runs. The Elite 50, the top 50 anglers from the Sidgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail. The Elite 50 season 2005 is underway. We're on Smith Lake in Alabama. We have reached day number four of this first tournament. This is championship day. Mark Davis, the man who won two out of four Elite 50s last year, is in the lead. But now, he's been tied by the man from Kentucky, Kevin Worth. And Mark Davis is fishing a wacky worm. And this is simply fishing a small, straight worm hooked right in the middle. Throw it as far as you can and let it fall right straight down. Don't move it a whole lot. Just let it fall. Boy, it's a simple way to catch it. I didn't get any bites in this hole yesterday on my, on my spinner bait, in my jerk bait. So to get a bite, there's a bite right there, little guy. You know, I, I went to a little worm. You can't necessarily always plan a big fish. I mean, you've just got to keep fishing and playing the percentages. That's the way I fish. I think getting a bite, that's the name of the game. That fish will be a keeper, and that will mean two fish today for Mark Davis so far. That means he retakes the lead from Kevin Worth. Now, this is simple fishing. A worm and a hook. <laughs> Nothing fancy about that, but it works. All right, second keeper for Mark Davis. That plants him firmly back in the lead, but the day is early. Now our first look at Chad Morgenthaler. Chad Morgenthaler still looking for his first win with the Bassmasters, although he has had eight top 10 finishes so far. Boy, don't you just love this guy? I, I, boy, I'm so proud to see Chad get this far, and I really hope that he doesn't get in this, this mood of, oh, man, I'm just glad I got here. I don't care whether I win or not. And he may have a little bit of that in him. However, sure. 
He does have the talent to win this event. They're still here. Look at that. Had him on top of the head. Now, you talk about funny. I'm sure he'll go. Oh, yeah, he's a good 17-incher. Keeper for Morgan Thaler. That'll move him a little bit up the board. Now to hole five and Zell Rowland. Hole number five and hole number six are probably the only two holes where you can get back in and pitch and flip jigs and tubes. Come on, that tree. Jesus, this is how my luck runs. Hang one in a tree. Can't move, can he? Novel way of doing it. You just pin yeah, the old bass yeah. right to the limb. You come back and get him whenever you need him. That is right. And that water there, and as I said, it's the same in hole number six. It's so unusual compared to all the other places out on the lake. This is truly black bass fishing back in this part of the country as opposed to out in the deep water and the spotted oh, yeah. bass. Catch the little ones, let the big ones get off. That's what bothers you right there. Phil Rowland knew he had some ground to make up when this final day started. Knew he had to run down Mark Watch Davis. Had to catch him if he wanted any chance at the top spot. So he's struggling now. Because you know a guy like Mark ain't going to be making them kind of mistakes right there. All right, from Zell Rowan over to Mark Davis. He's in hole number three, and it's that wacky worm that you were talking about earlier, Jerry. Throwing it on spin and tackle right here, and I think everybody remembers that uh, Mark Davis had an operation on his shoulder this past winter. He had that same operation possibly eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. He recovered from it pretty quickly at first time. This time, it was a little tougher rehabbing and, and recovering from it. I think he's in good shape now, and, and mentally, He's starting to get in real good shape. Look at the water ain't clear. Look at the little spot back. He's a tugging and a pulling. We're just gonna take you for a little ride. Come on, son. Come here. Come here. Come on. Thank you, Lord. So now the lead is stretched. Mark Davis pulls a little farther away from the rest of the field. Almost four pounds in lead for him at this point. There is more fishing to come. But is it too early to start thinking the impossible? One man could win three out of five Elite 50 events. We've got to see about that one. We'll be back. The Sitco Bass Insider. Mark Davis may need to change his name to Mr. Elite 50. The Arkansas professional has had an almost mystical lock on these events. He's won two of the first four. Now is qualified for yet another six-man final, which is even more impressive, considering Davis is coming off his worst Sitco Bassmaster Tour season. He could be on the verge of reaching an entirely new level in terms of winning percentage. Take, for example, Rick Clun, Mr. Bassmaster Classic, four championships. Rick Clun's winning percentage is 142 in 28 Classic. While Larry Nixon, who had a similar lock on Bassmaster Megabucks events, has a winning percentage of 250. Davis already has a winning percentage of 500 in the Elite 50s. If he were to go on and win at this one, it would bump him up to 600, a statistic that might last as long as Roger Maris's 61 home runs. The Bass Insider has been brought to you by Sitco. Smith Lake, Alabama, the first Elite 50 event of 2005. This is the final day, championship day. Mark Davis, the man who won two out of four events on the Elite 50 last year, is in the lead four and a half pounds over Kevin Worth. Right now, down on the water, we pick up the man who led the first two days of this tournament on Smith Lake, Kevin Van Dam. One of the keys when the water's this clear a lot of time is to keep, keep your bait real close to the surface just because the the mirror that it creates, even when it's slick, it helps break up the outline to the fish. If it gets down on their level, they get too good a look at it. So that's one of the reasons why I chose that real shallow running jerk bait yesterday. But today with the clouds and the wind and that, and the stirred up water, I want something that's wild and noisy and gets down deeper. 
KVD coming across with some very good information right there. He is an excellent jerk bait fisherman. He actually fishes with a, uh, a Strike King Wild Shiner, and as I say, he's, he's one of the best at that technique. And you know what? Of the six anglers on the course today, Kevin Van Dam has the best batting average, or the best catch average, and, and we compute that by assuming that everybody has five fish available a day, giving you 135 fish. Kevin has caught 75 for 135. That's a 555 average. Kevin Worth is close behind it, 533. My point is, good info from a good fisherman. 16 inches. <laughs> Kevin Van Dam, of course, he moves up a little bit into third place with that fish right there. He's just about to finish up his period in hole number one. Meanwhile, across the way in hole number two, as a matter of fact, within sight of Kevin Van Dam, we have Kelly Jordan wrapping up his fishing in hole number two. Can't have but one, maybe two casts left, and as long as you're still on the time, you can make a cast in your hole, but uh, Kelly is right up on the edge of it. One fifty, right? That's it in this hole. On the last cast. Can you believe that? Well, here we go again. I don't know how many last cast heroics we have had through the season of 2005, but Kelly Jordan, here we go one more time, I guess. Yeah, fish will be legal now. He's just kind of like a basketball. If it's in the air, it's going to count. His bait was in the water, so it will count. He better have had it on before the time. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out. Kevin Van Dam is, is going to keep the rules on you if no one else does. So Kelly Jordan, but we saw it. He was legal. He, he, was, he had his bait in the water. He made the cast before the time limit was over. And that is a keeper fish, too. Boy, what a, what a bonus to catch one like that right at the end of that hole. Going to move him all the way from sixth place up to third place. So Kelly Jordan making some noise. That was my last cast. I made it with about 20 seconds to go. Reeling in to go, caught that fish. There were four or five wizards. And now I got to go to the next hole. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> hey, I'll show you in more detail exactly what happened there. Kelly was over in the corner of hole number two. He hooked that fish in period number three and landed him in period number four. <laughs> and then he picked up and ran all the way across number two and into his next hole, number three. Kevin Van Dam, incidentally, was right there in the corner of one and watched that happen. And then when the time changed, just moved over into hole number two and continued. Yeah. According to our Toyota hole count, though, Kelly is headed now for, statistically, the best hole so far. They've caught four fish already in hole number three. And the best time period of the day? the number two time period. That is 11.20 to 12.40. No one catches fish <laughs> in the middle of the day, but they did. As a matter of fact, that lunchtime hour, that 11.30 to 12.30 time, may have been the peak period of the whole day because we went on to period number four, and it just wasn't productive. As a matter of fact, no fish at all were caught in period number four. So we're going straight to period number five. We're going straight to Kelly Jordan. We saw him last heading for number three. So now, of course, he's in hole number four right now. Kelly Jordan with a catch average of 407. And, and we're doing a lot of talking about the different periods and the different times. And, and you know, I realize that the clock is really important. You have to pay attention to it. On the other hand, you know what? You have to forget about it yeah. <laughs> and really concentrate on the cast that you're involved with right now. We always hear the guys talking about fishing in the moment. You know, you've heard Iconelli say that, Gary Klein, Rick Klein. They all say that. And, and sometimes I think, well, I wonder if folks are paying any attention to what these guys are saying. Kelly looks like he has a nice fish on right there, fishing off that real steep bluff. But, but think about this, Tommy. If a baseball player was batting in the second inning, and started thinking about how the pitcher would pitch him in the fifth inning, well, he'd just about give up that second inning at bat. Might as well. He'd just blow it. Well, now, think about this. If an angler yeah. sees a rocky point, good fish. I believe that's a keeper. But, but if, if, if an angler sees a, a rocky point down the bank about 10 casts, 
and then he starts thinking about how he's going to fish it when he gets there, then he has messed up the task that he's involved with. He might right as well now. just pick up and That's go right, right down there and, at that and moment. And do that. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I say you have to watch the you have to watch the clock because you have a, a certain amount of time in each period, and you got to, you know, you got to do your your best to to utilize your time correctly. But doggone, don't forget about the cast you're involved with right now. Kevin Worth is still throwing that little drop shot. Now, is this hard? I mean, is it so much harder because you fish this slow, sort of deliberate, light tackle, finesse worm kind of fishing? Does that make fishing these time periods, watching the clock that much harder? Wouldn't you rather be doing something a lot more active where you're throwing at targets and really moving along? Well, I, you know, I don't think so. It really wouldn't work that well today because these fish aren't shallow. Not very many of them anywhere. I think we, we are finding that out. So you're probably better off to do what uh, Kevin Worth and, and Mark Davis are doing right here, and that's pick out the best little spot you can find and really milk it, really fish it slow. Yes! Ho! No question, if that's the key. Got my adrenaline pumping on that one. Come on. Thank you, baby. Meaningful fish for Kevin Worth. That moves him within a pound and a half of our leader, Mark Davis. Jordan also moving up the leaderboard. And you never count out, ever, ever count out Kevin Van Dam. Oh, Will he make a move? A we'll be right back. Get ready, because we're going to freaking whack him. We are kicking off year number two for the Elite 50, the top 50 anglers in the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. We're here on Smith Lake in North Central Alabama. This is the final day. We've got six anglers left fishing a six-hole course. And our leader, incredibly, is the man who has won two of the four E50s contested so far. That is Mark Davis from Mount Ida, Arkansas. And he's being chased down a little bit by Kevin Worth at this moment. I'd like to talk to one of these fish one time, get them to explain a lot. Of, uh, there's a lot of questions I have for them. Uh, I'd want to ask them that. That salt that we put in these baits, do you guys really taste that salt, or is it just there to make the cuts of my fingers burn? Pretty good question. If he ever gets an answer, I hope he'll share that Man, with Man, I've got some questions, too, if you could. <laughs> hey, down. you know what? If I was a competitor, here's what would worry me. Maybe. A lot of guys out on the tour Maybe. really don't know how to win. They don't know what it feels like. Mark Davis, great as he is, and, and he did win a classic now, but he had never won a tour event until last year. He came through on Table Rock, got the feeling, and, and it's like the dam broke. And you know what? You put his ability with that feeling of knowing how to win, and now he thinks he can win every time out. That's worrisome. Oh, man, what you talking about? Plenty. Mm -hmm. Good sugars. Woo, son. Man, what about a dry spell, in and a dry spell? Into that dry spell with his fourth fish of the day, Mark Davis looking better all the time. Kevin Van Dam right now looking for those packs of spotted bass that he had success with in the first three days of this tournament. Oh, right there, right there, right there, they're running, Chad. Right over here. On the way out, I'm gonna let him keep him working that bait. Maybe a bigger one to get underneath him. Oh God! There's a good. There's a whole school of biggins in here. Get ready, cause we're gonna freaking whack them. Whole school biggins in here. Did you see all those? I knew there'd be them somewhere around here with them shad. Look at the shad right there. There's a big ball right there. See him? That's why they're back here. They've got them herded back in here. That's exactly what was happening yesterday when I uh, 
got into that group over there. Don't, that bait is gonna, they're gonna hold that bait back there, I guarantee you. You know, I won these things last year. I don't, you, you worry about which hole you're starting in and all that, it don't matter. You've got to catch them when you get there. I mean, it, it can matter, but there's no way of planning it. That's good. Woo, jumping, boy, jumping, 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 jumping. You can get a look at that one. You can tell that was a really good fish. We assume that's going to be a keeper. And if so, that is going to be fish number five, a limit for Mark Davis. And of course, I'm sure that's what he had on his mind going out today, catching that limit number one. And you notice his attitude is so relaxed now. He's having a good time. He is so confident. Uh, that's what I said earlier. He knows what it feels like to win, and he's headed that direction. That'd be fine. I think they're my number one fans. They've been with me all day. Gonna wrap up period number five. One more period in the six hole course, and that's period six coming up starting now. And here's what's bothering me, Tommy. When Mark Davis gets to the way in, the first thing he's gonna do is run to his wife, Tilly, and give her a big kiss. We've that's, got to warn I'm her. Worried We've about seen that. this footage. We must tell her about that. <laughs> Well, as we go into period number six, we're going to try to catch up right now, I think, with Kevin Worth, who is the closest pursuer that Mark Davis has. But I'm reminded of what Rick Glenn said last week. He said Mark Davis may have finished 10th in the greatest angler debate, but when it comes to catching these post-spawn fish, he may be the best ever. That's a very good point. And, and you know, a post-spawn fish does have a different personality. And it's almost like you need that uh, uh, a slow approach and, and just, just fish very carefully to catch these post-spawning fish. And Mark Davis is the king there. I'm pretty sure we got number four. Pretty sure, don't break my heart. Hey, Nitty! You hear me talking to you, big boy? All right, well, that will be a keeper over 16 inches, so that'll be fish number four for Kevin Worth. That's a big step, but he's got a long ways to go farther if he wants to run down our leader, Mark Davis. Now we head over to Kelly Jordan. Kelly Jordan, who just landed this one here. This was his fourth fish. That put him in third place. He's in the hunt to take second place away from Kevin Worth. That seems to be the hotly contested race at this Look point. At he needs one more for his limit. He may have stumbled upon it. There's a nice one in there. Here he goes. Well, I hope he's a keeper. He looks like he might be. Not for sure. Oh, yeah, he's a keeper. Oh, yeah, big old spot. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on around over here. Come on, baby. Stay on there. Stay on there. Come on. Oh, this spot of bass on here quit. Gotcha. Whoo! Barely right through the nose. Check that out. I think it's a keeper too. This would be awesome. Two keepers in like two minutes. Struggling all day. Oh yeah, 17 and a half inches. Number five. Whew! Don't have much, don't have any big ones, but I've got five. I like this cove. Two keepers in five minutes. They should all be that good. He should like that cove that yielded his fifth fish. That's a limit for Kelly Jordan. He's now unofficially tied for second 
with Kevin Worth. Can he hang yeah. on? And will Worth put on a final chart? And Mark Davis, can he win three out of five Elite 50 events? It's almost unthinkable, but it could happen. We'll have it all for you. The weigh-in is coming up next from Smith Lake. The Sitgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Mercury Marine, Lawrence, Sitgo, and Cialis. Just about time for the weigh-in and just enough time for one more look at Kevin Van Dam. When he located a good pack of spotted bass, oh, made a good a play good, a to catch one of them, he thought they might turn around his fortunes on this final day. But it just didn't happen. That's today. Sit go turning point. A whole school of biggest. Get ready, because we're going to freaking whack them. The final day of 2005's first E50 tournament started with a lot of powerful elements in place. The Super Six anglers included Kevin Van Dam, who won the series last year and led here the first two days. Kelly Jordan, the highly regarded angler who was on the rebound from a bad tour season. Zell Rowland, already a tour win under his belt this year. Kevin Worth, solid every day and starting just a pound behind the leader. And the leader coming in, Mark Davis, who won two of the four Elite 50 events last year. But maybe the most powerful element of them all was an overnight cold front that dropped the springtime temperatures down into the 40s. The Smith Lake spotted bass changed. The anglers had to change with them. That is so aggravating. Zell Rowland felt that he had to have big fish to catch the leader, but found a lot of frustration. Chad Morgenthaler could not duplicate his day three limit. And Kevin Van Dam was also hoping for a few more bass to stay a bit more shallow so he could catch him oh, with a jerk yeah. bait. But he fell short of a limit as well. Mark Davis failed early to catch a limit as he had on day three. So he scaled down and slowed down. Kevin Worth took much the same tack. And Kelly Jordan has managed to scratch out the all-important limit as Ooh. well. Before we start the weigh-in, let's hear again what Rick Klund said about Mark Davis last time. Mark Davis has just ended up 10th in the greatest angler debate. And, but if you ask me who the best all-time post-spawn fisherman is, it's Mark Davis. Another beautiful evening in Jasper, Alabama. The turnout is huge, especially after the tight weigh-in the night before. The boats are in, and backstage, the anglers are getting in place. Kevin Van Dam will go first, knowing that his plan didn't work out today. Us catching these fish, post spawners in the backs of pockets and that, and they come up there and get it and just, you know, just kind of nipping the bait. The KVD, five pounds and 13 ounces, has Van Dam leading this thing right now. Kelly Jordan knows where he could have won it today. Had one opportunity, a really big one. Saw him, it was a great big largemouth, probably five pounds, and uh, threw my little floating worm over there, and it swam over to it, and I said, oh man, and my heart about stopped. And, it kept on going, picked up, and didn't have it. So that was my one chance to really make up some ground, but we'll see what happens. He's got nine pounds and 12 ounces, and now Kelly Jordan is set. Jordan puts up the first limit, and a two-day total of 21.5 takes the lead. I was going to go for all of it or none, and I think I'm going to end up with the none. <laughs> mark in bass winnings. Five pounds and 15 ounces on the scales for Zell. Puts him in second place. Zell Rowland couldn't get them to hang on today yeah, either. He finishes where he started in fourth place. Next, it's Chad Morgan Thaler. He's got one bass on the scales. Good news for KJ. Let's see what it does for him. Morgan Thaler finishes well, sixth, but gains valuable points in his campaign to make the classic. Kelly Jordan sixth. is still in the hot seat, Bassmaster and Kevin classic. Worth Kevin is ready Worth to play his Worth final hand. And two ounces to take the lead. Ten pounds, seven ounces, and Kevin Worth, Worth takes over the lead. The I'm in close. Real close. I think I've got ten pounds, though. Kevin Worth knew he had to get his limit, and that's what he did. Starting only a pound back, it might have been enough. He takes his seat. Moment of truth coming up. Put your hands together for Mark Davis. He needs nine pounds and six ounces to take the lead, and Mark Davis could go from six to first, 11 pounds, eight ounces, and Mark Davis is your Elite 50 Jasper champion. There have now been five complete Elite 50 tournaments, and Mark Davis has won three of them. I just had a miserable tour season this year, and, uh, but I got the feeling that I slowly climbed out of the gutter there at the end, and uh, I'm back now. 
if you measure yourself against the best in the business, then no one can deny that at this moment in time, Mark Davis stands head and shoulders above them all. Your Jasper, Alabama Elite 50 champion. If we hadn't seen it, if we hadn't sat here and watched it, I would say it didn't happen, but it did happen. You know, the thing that occurs to me, I hope our audience realizes what an incredible thing Mark Davis has pulled off here. He, Three out of five E50s, that's <laughs> impossible. He cannot do that again. He cannot bat 600, but he is doing it. We'll find out if he can keep it up. Hey, Mark Davis, congratulations. Keep it going. Now to Tommy Biffle. Tommy Biffle, five pounds and 13 ounces, gets the Pure Later Big Bass of the tournament, the Bush Shootout. Of course, that's our big single day catches tournament at the end of the year. The single day catch from this tournament was Kevin Van Dam. 20 pounds, two ounces. He's sitting in the number 10 position on the Bush shootout list. Our final Toyota hole count shows that hole number five turned out to be the best of all. They caught seven fish in there. The period was period number two. They caught six fish then. So now we look forward to Lake Dardanelle, which, wait a minute, is 50 miles from where Mark Davis lives. That's not fair. That's no. just not fair. That is not fair. I tell you what, Lake Dardanelle really provided a great venue last year. I bet it will again. The thing I remember besides the good fishing, was the fact that other than the classic, that was the biggest, wildest, craziest weigh-in crowd I have ever seen. I'm looking forward to see what Dardanelle will do this year. I think they'll rekindle that same thing this year. Join us, find out when we see you in Arkansas next time on the Elite 50. That's what the people come to see. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. It's gonna take you for a little For ride. more, log on, on to Bassmaster.com. Come here. Come here.